in module four, we talk about cultivating customer loyalty, how to turn your customers into evangelists. You remember in module three, we talked about how to convert um, your employees into fans. So this, the module four, module three and module four, of course, customers and um, um, employees, uh, the two sides of the same coin, all must work together in tandem to create, create a great company. So customers, because the short span of short span of uh, attention these days, because there's too much information overload, customers cannot see you, customers cannot hear you, customers cannot see you. So the only thing that companies must do is to turn their customers into evangelists that they are held. <laughs> together that are proud of them they are out there to sing their praises to the ends of the world that's how great brands like apple have been able to do it southwest airlines nordstrom usaa mention them these are companies that have fanatical fans fanatical i mean evangelists customers customers that are glued to them customers that are willing to tattoo them the names of their companies on their bodies. Companies like Harley Davidson. These are great brands that are, have evangelists as customers. In fact, they are like a religious cult. Their customers really admire them. So, with that in, in, in notion in mind, let us move on to let you know that customers with is an Oxymoron. Why Customers Week is an oxymoron? Customers Week about in 1984, um, ICSA, the International Customer Service Association, came up with the notion that every every um, first full week in um, October every year should be devoted as a customer week. Of course, people like um, Ken Blanchard has uh, blasted such notion as an oxymoron. Why, why is a customer's week? It has 52 weeks in a year. So why do you go just to um, one week to customers? 52 weeks should be customer's week. Every week should be a customer's week. Every week should be a customer's week. And again, you say, why satisfied customers are dangerous? Satisfied customers are never, 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 never loyal to you must move from satisfaction to loyalty, total loyalty. Unless the customers are loyal to you, they will leave you. Satisfied customers will not stay with you. But satisfaction, in fact, satisfaction is just the entry ticket. Satisfaction is the entry ticket to customers, to service. If you cannot create satisfied customers, then you are not no, no, no business in business. So why cost? Customers week is, 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 is an oxymoron, is that because there are 52 weeks in a year, so you cannot just devote one week to customers. You must devote the entire 52 weeks. You must devote every minute of the day to customers. You must devote every hour of the day to the customers. So then do not aim at just satisfaction. Do not just aim at satisfaction. You must aim at total loyalty. The customers must be loyal to you. 100% loyal. This is what companies like um, Harley Davidson have been able to do. This is what companies like Apple have been able to do. This is what companies like Southwest Airlines have been able to do. This is what companies like Ritz Carlton Hotel have been able to do. This is what companies like Nordstrom has been able to do. This is what companies like Zappos have been able to do. If you are just looking for satisfied customers, I'm afraid they will leave you. I'm very, very afraid. So, while loyalty is the only thing you should crave in a customer, you must go out there to look for loyal customers. You must grow your customers to be loyal to you, loyal only to you. You must go out there and blow the trumpet like Chica Phil A does. Satisfy customers with more than a tasty sandwich. You must satisfy customers with more than what you are offering. You must get them engaged must get them close. You must create different, different 
events that really keeps the customers engaged with you. Otherwise, they will not be your evangelists. So, get your general managers, get your directors out of the office. Let them go out there and engage with the customer. Create different events. Create fun. Create fun so that customers and employees can get engaged. This is the only way that you can win in this brave new world. That is the only way you can win in this brave new world. So let's look at one, how one of the best known icons, Steve Jobs' way of customer loyalty and evangelism. The Steve Jobs' way of customer loyalty and what do we really need to say? Steve Jobs was the embodiment of focus on the customer. And of course, he had many distractors, but in hindsight, in hindsight, he realized that he was really right. He was right. Because people castigated him as being, I mean, they call him all sort of names. He kept, he stopped his gun. He said that. The word design is a tricky word. Many people think of it as how it looks, but the caution was not how it looks, but how it works. That was his way. That is why he focused, Steve Jobs focused design and that is why we have fanatical evangelists Apple has such fanatical loyalty to its products all lines of its products of course starting with the iMac the iPhone the iPod the iPad mention it nobody ever uses Apple products and switches to another product when Apple announces that products are coming out. They give, in fact, they announce it six months in advance and people start getting excited. People line up to get. It was a particular instance when the iPhone, the iPhone 2, when it came out, some people spent 18 hours in the queue to be able to be the very first to purchase. That is Steve Jobs' world of customer reality and evangelism. Steve Jobs was all out there to leave a dent on the universe. That's how he challenged his people. That they were not just out there to make products and throw them over the fence. They were out there to leave a dent on the universe. And according to Steve Jobs, unless a product was insanely great, it could not be sent to the market. So that's how he was able to challenge his people to challenge his people, push them to the limits, to be able to come up with insanely great products that all of us crave, all of us aspire to. Of course, most of us use um, other people's products, or I mean, other companies' products, and our greatest aspiration is to be able to one day be able to afford, because the products are not cheap, of course, has selected this market, don't forget. I think in module two, we talked about selection of the customer segment you wish to see with precision and care. You cannot be all things to all men. That is what Steve Jobs has done. He has selected carefully the customer segment he wishes to serve. These are people that do not pinch, these are people that are willing to pay any price to get Apple products. That is how you grow customer loyalty and evangelism. Customers that be willing uh, out there to sing their praises to the ends of the world. If you are not able to do that, I'm afraid you may not survive for long. This is so enlisting loyal customers in your game plan. Enlisting customers, I mean loyal customers in your game plan is simply is the jobs where we have talked about. He's not throwing money, millions and millions for the 
giant companies throwing money into advertising. Advertising hardly is it's all these days because people are inundated with so much information overload that as Tom Peters once said, that one satisfied customer telling other people about their product is worth 10 times the price in advertising dollars. So only loyal customers are the people that can enable you move the needle in your game plan of capturing the market. Of course, as at the last episode, Apple had market capitalization in excess of $400 billion, far in excess of the company that was second, which was ExxonMobil. Apple customers are loyal and fanatical and uh, evangelists. So, listing your real customers in your game plan is the fastest way, the easiest way, the cheapest way and the most effective way of firing your performance, the most effective way of achieving your results. Of course, there is a profile story of a customer bearing me in my Cadillac, credit to credit customer strategies. Of course, in those days, it used to be credit to grave, credit to grave strategies, but we said, Rather than cradle to grave, why don't you pursue cradle to cradle customer strategies? Cradle to cradle customer strategies means that even the generation yet unborn will come and become your customers. Because if I'm like a mother and I'm so much attached to your company, won't I be telling my kids, my children, my grandchildren about you? And of course, if I'm so fanatical, there's no way my children and my great grandchildren will not be fanatical about the values, about the company that their grandmother, their grandfather had been fanatical about. So, this is a story of a certain lady who was so attached to her Cadillac in her will. She wrote in her will, Bury me in my Cadillac, a white Cadillac, of course. Her last wish, her last wish had to be obeyed. She was buried in her Cadillac. She was attached to her Cadillac. That is how you grow customer loyalty, how you grow customer evangelism. Let people be attached to their products. Let people be attached to yourself. Be out there, nurture them, be them, give them the required information, the required things they need to enjoy your products. See you in module five.